Uh, today's lesson is solving proportions. So let's start off with what is a proportion before we even get started and then we'll talk about how to solve it. What is a proportion? Question mark. All it is is just a special type of equation. where one fraction is equal to another fraction. That's it. Two fractions, and hopefully when you hear the word fraction, you don't start freaking out. Uh, it's not going to be that bad, you'll see. So that is the definition, and now we're going to talk about how to solve a proportion. So all proportions look like this. Well, hold on, let me write the word examples. Um, number one, all proportions have, uh, just like a regular equation, the left side and the right side, in the middle is the equal sign. And there are one, two, three, four parts always. Dun, dun, dun. First example, x divided by 5 is equal to 9 divided by 8. And the way you solve all proportions, and this is the only time in math that I can think of, that you will use this particular technique. It's called cross-multiplying. So you're going to multiply the x with the 8, and you get 8x, equal sign goes straight down, and then you multiply the 5 with the 9, which is 45, oops, sorry, that's crooked, and then step 2 is just divide both sides by whatever the coefficient of x is, in this case it's 8, so step 2 is divide. <laughs> divide both sides by 8 divide both sides by 8 8 divided by 8 is 1 so you get 1x equals whatever 45 divided by 8 is hopefully my wife stops yelling at my daughter sometime soon <laughs> 5.625 5 point six two five. Most of the answers on the assignment will be nice decimals, but if you have a, a long decimal answer, just round it to the tenths place. Example number two. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Sometimes the variable, well, it doesn't really matter where the variable is located. Anyways, notice one, two, three, four parts. So 4 over 3 is equal to 10 over n. Doesn't matter where the vari variable is located, you still are going to cross multiply. 4 with n is 4n. 3 times 10 is 3, or is 30. And then divide both sides by 4. So it's a very special type of equation, and you solve it a very special way. 1n equals 7 point something. 7.5. Bam. Done. So that's part one of the lesson. Uh, you have to do three of those. Yep, three. Part two of the lesson.
is story problems. Story problems. Again, just like the word fractions, you probably, like most students, freak out when you hear the word or hear the phrase story problems. It's going to be okay. Just going to do one example though. Jojo drank two Cokes in five minutes. I don't know where I came up with these examples from, but two Cokes in five minutes. Period. How many Cokes can he or she, Jojo could be a girl's name or a guy's name, huh? How many Cokes can he drink in 12 minutes? Oh my goodness, pretend I spelled minutes correctly. Okay, I'm about to can't, I can't live with it. There we go. So there is a strategy for doing story problems. First of all, the way you know it is going to be a proportion, or most likely is going to be a proportion, is there are three numbers, and there's one number we don't know. That's four. All proportions have four parts. Yeah, yeah? So that's the first thing. Uh, not every story problem is going to end up being a proportion, but a lot of story problems will be proportions. And here's the strategy. You take the two numbers that are in the same sentence, like that. Two Cokes in five minutes. And you just immediately make a fraction out of it. Two Cokes in five minutes. Next. This next number, it does matter where you put it. It's 12 minutes. It has to go on the same level as the 5 minutes. So 5 minutes is on the bottom. So we need to put 12 minutes also on the bottom. Voila. And then our unknown value is right here. You can use whatever letter variable you want. You could use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X, and our common. Uh, but I'm going to use a C for Coke. Yeah, yeah. You should, should try to use variables that make sense. Then you solve it just like normal. 5 times C is 5C. Equal sign goes straight down. 2 times 12 is 24. And then you divide both sides by 5. 5 by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1C. Or, let, me, let me say it correctly. 5C divided by 5 is 1C. Uh, teachers like to say cancel. But you've heard me say it many times. There's no such thing as canceling. Let's get that cursor out the way. Dun, dun, dun. 24 divided by 5. 24 divided by 5 is 4.8. 4.8. So here's the thing with story problems. And while I was grading the assignment, most of you did a really good job of writing a sentence or answering the question. So Make sure on all story problems you answer the question. So, how many Cokes can he drink in 12 minutes? Uh, he can drink 4.8 Cokes. Bam. If you want to round up to 5 and say he can drink about 5 Cokes, I'd be happy with that too. But, I do want to see this answer first. And then, obviously, if you write... If you want to round it in your sentence answer, that's perfectly okay. And part three. Uh, this is the longest and hardest part of the problem, or of the assignment. Uh, by the way, how many story problems are there? Just two. Two of those. And then percent story problems is what I'm going to call it, but it's not much of a story problem. You'll see. So I'm putting that in quotes. Percent story problems. Bam. So there is
is a technique, strategy, method, I don't know what you want to call it, for uh, dealing with percent story problems. And here is the phrase that you want to memorize. So we're, the whole lesson is dealing with proportions. Same with uh, Friday's lesson. It's just more proportions, more difficult proportions. Notice left side, right side, top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay, percent proportions. Here's the phrase. Is over of equals percent over 100. Do you memorize this phrase? Just say it to yourself like 30 times. Is over of equals percent over 100. Is over of equals percent. Just, you need it to sink in your brain. So, one good strategy is saying something over and over. Dun, 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 until the point of. Uh, until you get to the point where you have it memorized. Alright, so here is example number one 80%. Of what number is 40? See, that's not much of a story problem. So, here's how we would like you to do this. And yes, parents, I do understand there are other ways to do it, but the um, the lesson that we are doing is called proportion, so we want everybody to solve it this particular way. Um, first things first, write a blank proportion and then always 100% of the time 100 is going to go in the bottom right part. Next, if in the story problem they tell you the percent, the percent number always goes on the top right. So right there is where we're going to write the 80. And that should make perfect sense because 80% mean, literally means 80 out of 100. Percent means out of 100. And the next thing is, is 40. Notice is goes on the top left. So we want to put the is or the 40 right here. And then, of course, the unknown, you can use whatever letter you want. I'm going to use an N this time. Oh, N makes sense because what number? Yeah. yeah. I got lucky. Anyways, cross multiply. 80 times N. I prefer to have my variable on the left. So, 80 times N. 40 times 100 is a 4 with 1, 2, 3 zeros. And then divide both sides by 80. 80 n divided by 80 is 1 n. 1 n equals, I think it's 5. Nope, it's 50. If you're not sure, please use a calculator. Check out a calculator if you're not 100% sure. Still finding some people making errors with like especially with negative numbers, so if you're not a hundred percent sure, you check on a calculator. Okay, next one. That wasn't too bad, right? Mm-hmm. Um this problem is gonna look very similar. Eighty percent of forty is what number? Voila. So, the setup is going to be exactly the same. Bam. Oops, you can't see that. Bam. Good thing I noticed. Um, 100 goes on the bottom right, always. And this time, 80%. The percent number always goes right there. Now you got a 50-50 chance. But we don't want to guess. We don't want you to guess. Of 40. The of number goes on the bottom left. 
so that 40 is going to go right here this time. So yes, it absolutely does matter where you put it. I'm going to use n again. n times 100 is 100 n. Sign goes right there. 40 times 80 is 3,200. And then divide both sides by 100. Well, 100 n divided by 100 is 1 n equals those zeros cancel those. 32. So where we put that 40 made a big difference. Yeah, yeah. If you put the 40 in the wrong place, uh, got 50 50 chance. You might get you might get lucky and put it in the correct location. But like I said, we don't want you to get lucky. We want you to understand a process, a procedure, and algorithm. Direction. Following directions is super important in real life, so it's also super important in math. Dun, dun, dun. Last problem for this section. 12 out of 28. 12 out of 28 is what percent? Percent. Question mark. So, uh, 12 out of 28, I think we all know what that would look like as a fraction. 12 out of 28, bam, equals, it's a percent problem, so you always put 100 on the bottom right. So our unknown must be right here. I'm going to use P for percent, and I'm totally out of room on my paper. Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to show my work horizontally. 28P equals 1200 and divide both sides by 28 if you want to show your work this way also you can the danger is we see students put equal signs here cannot do that violation of the most sacred rule in algebra which is thou shalt not violate the equal sign uh, 28p divided by 28 is 1p and 1200 divided by 28 I have no idea but I'm gonna guess probably close to 50 we'll see divided by 42 so here we have to round and I said round it to the um, tenth place so 42.9 about 42.9 Voila. And two more things. Part four of the lesson. I know what you're thinking. Uh, why is this lesson so long? Uh, let's just say I did not want it to be, but I often get outvoted by the other teachers who thought it'd be a good idea to try to teach all this stuff in one day. Part four. Um, part four is how do you turn a and it's not I don't even understand why it's part of the lesson to be honest with you it doesn't deal with proportion whatever so skill number one is how to turn numbers into percent Bam, and I'm just going to do a whole bunch of examples real fast. Uh, five, if you want to turn that into a percent, you just multiply it by 100%, which is 500%. It's kind of like a label. Like 5 times x would be 5x. Five, 5 times 100%, 500%. It's kind of like percent is the label. And I hope you didn't just see me spit all over my screen, but. Let's go with 0 0.12. Do, 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 not, do not use an equal sign. Well, maybe you can, but please. I'm not 100% sure if you can, so don't use the equal sign here. Uh, so you're going to multiply this by 100%. Da, da, da. I already know that. 0 0.12 times 100% is 12%. Okay, and let's do and one more example. So all you have to 
do to change this number into a percent is multiply it by 100 percent. Do, 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 do. 0 0.0083 times 100. 0.83%. 0.83%. 0.83%. 0.83%. Da, da, da. Okay, so that was um one of the things in part 4. And the other concept in part 4 was testing if two fractions or ratios are proportional. Testing to see if two fractions or ratios, kind of the same thing, are proportional. And so for example, let's see is is three fourths proportional to da, 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 I'm gonna go thirty-two forty-two. Oh, question mark. It's a yes or no question. So at the end of this process, we're gonna write yes or no. So what you do is you set up a proportion. I'm gonna teach you how to read that symbol in a second. Okay, so here's how you would say this sentence. And yes, it is a sentence. Actually, it's more like a question. Um, is 3 fourths equal to 32 over 42? That's how you would say that. That's why there's a question mark there, because it's a question. The way you test to see is by multiplying the cross products. So on the left, we're going to write 3 times 42. Does that equal 4 times 32? Dun, dun, dun. And 3 times 42 is 106, 126. Does that equal 4 times 32, which is a 128? The answer is no, it is not proportional. If they're equal, then yes, it is proportional. If they are not equal to each other, then no, it is not proportional. It's pretty close though, which, which means 3 fourths is really close to 32 over 42, but not quite. Not quite. Um, so yeah, cross multiply, see if the left side equals the right side. That's it. That's the whole lesson. I know what you're thinking. It's the longest lesson of the year, and you are right, it is. Uh, so, but the assignment only has a total of 10 questions, and as long as you get 8 of them correct, that's a 4, 6 of them correct is a 3, 4 correct is a 2. Um, yes, there were people today in class that did one problem in an hour. You can do one problem in an hour, that's 0.5. You kind of get what you deserve, right? Dun, dun, dun. Bam.